Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of sculpting a mini tank. So um, in this portion of the tutorial actually, we'll be actually be moving on to the surface volume sculpting portion of it. So in the previous video, we covered like how to make uh, the kitsch lines, you know, just for your rough proportions. And we'll be proceeding to make the surface volumes shortly. And as usual, I'll be making like a new layer for it just to be safe and increase the mesh resolution so it kind of holds up overall, you know, without getting too much like janky edges. Okay, so in this part, actually, I just opted to use the stamped tool, which is a rectangular kind of shape that they already have built in. And um, with the line constraint along with the angle lock, uh, I'll start by building like the top section of it first. You know, just to give myself a bit of like orientation to the model. And you will see me um, moving the the top part of it down slightly, you know, so it can align to the lines that we have drawn previously. So in this section, um, actually you will see me just toggling between the angle settings, you know, because there's like some slope surfaces on the tank, it, the tank itself, and I'll just like be roughing up the initial volumes of it with a with the same rectangular tool that you saw, and I'll be just subtracting directly, you know, with the subtraction option that we talked about in the earlier tutorial video, just like this. So this is actually my, my method of actually just um kind of like slicing into and then adding parts onto the surface itself nothing too complex it's just what really kind of works most of the time for me okay in this part you'll see me uh, ignoring the, the little triangular area first because i'll kind of try to use a low tech way to tackle it you know it's kind of a bit brute force but the beauty of it is I can just like kind of smooth it out with the, the smooth tool in a bit and just tidy it up probably with a neater looking stem down the road. But sometimes I just kind of like live with it and, and maybe um, try and build it into the design itself. That's kind of like one way um, you can look at for this kind of like slightly more complex surface angles. I, I know there are people with better solutions out there, but I think this is kind of how I approach it. And probably I could have done better by just like, like re-angling the subtraction to a bit more, or, you know, just like playing around with more of the angle settings. But I guess it, I think it just didn't really cross my mind during that moment, so I just brute forced it like I said. Okay, um, in this portion of the sculpt, right, I'll just use like a giant kind of like rectangular shape clay, clay brush to just set in the, the main shape first, you know, you don't have to be too precise about it because you'll be filling in like the insides separately later on anyway. What you just want to do is just get the primary shape out there right first and you can trim off like the, the slope edges as you can see later on. But occasionally, yeah, you just saw, you know, less in a bit that there can be a bit of a quirk in terms of the way how, how the, the brush works. You know, you just get like this strange um, artifact there that you saw moments ago. So just don't worry, just undo the thing and just redo it. If not, I think uh, what you can do to get around that is just to lower the layer resolution settings slightly so it doesn't like overthink itself when it's trying to do the duplication calculation. So you can see I'm just trying to test out the angle here for trimming the site and just take your time with it. Sometimes like the tool may not lock on properly like you want it to. OK, 
Okay, at this time here, um, I'll just zoom out a bit and just recheck like the general proportions of it and see whether it just kind of is similar to the concept that we have in the reference image. So um, what's going to be happening next is actually me just trimming away the inner volume slightly because we need space to build like the, um, the threads and like the, the wheels that go within the threads and yeah you can just see me just checking the thing again over here and just adjusting the light so what I've done is just placing the light into the main scene origin so when you rotate your model around the light will actually just uh, be consistent you just follow your model instead of just being static in the background and that might be a bit distracting if you actually have the shadows turned on in, in medium so uh, I'm just like building the edges here now all the little untidy edges that we saw earlier just patching them up and you, just can, you can just redraw or trim the edges as you need to so at this point we kind of got like more or less like the main shape down for the tank's body and if you feel like you need to take a break from um, the VR world thing at this moment. I just feel free to just go ahead and hit pause, you know, and just just rest for a bit and reorientate yourself. Okay, um, at this moment now, I'll just be kind of like changing the color to something more visible in the viewport and I'll also be adjusting the specularity of the material and medium in a bit. Uh, it's kind of one of the settings that if you left it at default, it actually still works. It's just kind of like a personal preference thing, you know, like if you made it a bit more shiny, you'll be able to see like the surface. Um, whether there are bumps or is it a totally flat surface depending on what you're doing so um, we'll be sculpting the turret of the tank uh, I decided to use like a kind of pew shape stamp for this because I think it resembles most closely to how the shape generally looks like and I'll just tweak like the width of it later on but yeah it's just getting in the general shape first and getting a feel of like how the volume may be initially so I'll, I'll just be like doing it several times over here as you can see until I find like I'm happy with it before I move on to the next phase of the turret. So I'll be using the square clay, clay tool to trim the front off a bit and increasing the resolution just to smooth out the edges at the um, curved areas. So uh, just, just remember primary forms first, you know, just don't noodle in the details yet. And then you'll find like like this method of working in VR will make a lot more sense. This part of the tutorial will be sped up slightly. Um, it's kind of the same process that we will be going through towards until the end of the entire project, basically. Um, using the clay tool and or using stamps itself, and just making the big shapes first, and um moving on to the smaller surface details later on so you'll see like me trying to finish up the turret over here with another stem and remember to toggle your resolution settings every now and then you know if you find the surfaces to be a bit too low res or high res i think for that matter right you, you get more experience with it you know as you play with medium more you know like which parts need more detail and which parts need less so for me like basically like any 
surface that is kind of I think might be facing the camera more I'll just normally put a bit more resolution on those areas whereby later you can see like maybe the areas that the tank treads the ones on the inside part of the tank we can just get away with um, moderately kind of sized resolution inside because so no, no, nobody will be seeing those objects inside so I don't think you need to waste like um, CPU or GPU cycles trying to render those stuff at all okay um, for the tank threads we just make it as similar as we can to the exterior of the body you know like if you overshoot like the geometry slightly just don't worry we'll trim it off in a bit and you can already see on like the left hand side of the screen the the mirror tool sometimes does create the artifacting that we talked about earlier so uh, just take your time and just either you can smooth it out or you can just take a giant square tool or something and just trim off the excess it's currently rounding off the edges here a bit you know just just to make it wrap properly to to the body of the tank so yeah uh, this is kind of like like how the process is for for the most part just trimming rounding off edges for the tank threads nothing too complicated so I think by this time it's fair to say that we've gotten at least maybe like 20-30% of the tank done and I think maybe at this stage what you can do is just try to adjust um, maybe certain parts of it like just shifting the proportions or just adjusting the height of it and what I'm doing over here in the video before you dive into any details because you, you actually will be pretty hard to adjust these things later on if you're fully committed to all the cut lines and uh, little geometry stuff on the panels later on it'd be harder to shift them around So um, I'll also be uh, rounding off other parts of the tank threads, like the bottom part you see here. Let's do the same thing, just tidying up, um, maybe adding and reducing some volumes which I, in some areas that I feel like could be a bit too thin. And yeah, that's kind of how, how this process more or less is. No, it's kind of like a bit more trial and error based, but I, I think that's kind of like part of the fun in VR like you kind of get like almost um, instant feedback for your scalp and it's kind of like non-destructive in the sense that like you can just undo and redo your your steps as you deem fit so over here I'm just like rebuilding the front and back of the tank just to try and seal it up the volume here um, to give it a kind of illusion that there is some machinery that's inside so at this point sometimes like what goes through my head is like um sort of a bit of a wall building kind of stuff I'll just think about like what could be inside the tank you know uh, what's the crew like how they're going to be operating and maybe how many of them are inside there and like where would they sit or position themselves so uh, these questions can kind of like help you direct your own design process in that sense versus um, just just trying to fill up the areas just just for the sake of it So yeah, we are kind of like almost at the end of like the general volume creation for the tank and mostly at this stage for me, it's just um, editing the proportions as I mentioned earlier on and kind of just retrimming some of the edges and I'll, from here actually I also I'll just think about like which are the layers that I could increase the resolution more because I, I feel like maybe 
if the lower part of the body doesn't need it so much, I'll just redirect the geometry um, count to maybe like the, X, the size of the tank where they will be holding a bit more cut lines or rivet holes, etc. And over here, I'm just trying to add like a little antenna just to break up the overall form of the tank slightly because at the moment, I think it's super symmetrical. Um, this is just trying to break the silhouette slightly and kind of also serves as a break for me, you know. I have been working on the main body for a while now, so like, like I can just, just move on to other parts of the tank just to balance out um, the overall detail and the primary forms for here. So it will just be like um, just tidying up some of the volumes over here at this part and I'll see you in the next video.